Uh, welcome back to Hermes Academy and uh, Yakohaya Ministries. Um, How do you pronounce it? Yakohaya Ministries. Welcome, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about similitudes for... Um, and I think Cliff is going to really, really, really enjoy this one. Wow, wow. I think he's going to have a lot to say. A lot, lot, lot to say. So this might be a part two, Cliff. There's a lot to say about this similitude. It's a really, really good one. But I said that one about, what, two, three as well. But this one is really, really good. So I'm excited about this similitude. And once again, we're going to tell you why. So let's get started with well, the beginning. It says it says as in the summer, the living trees are distinguished from the dry by their fruit and green leaves. So in the world to come, the righteous shall be distinguished from the unrighteous by their happiness. OK, so this is kind of OK. All right. This is talking a lot about the world to come. Uh, no, that's one of your babies. The world to come. Like since you discovered, since we we have discovered the Third Testament, there. Right. right. Since it or it discovered us or whatever, but. Yeah. So, oh, I see what you're saying. So the green trees were still. We, the last class we talked about the dry trees, and now we're going to the green trees. The world to come being the green trees. I'm with you now. Come yeah. On. Last time we talked about um, the winter. This time we're talking about the summer. Okay. All right. So, right here, let's see. Let the rain come down. Yeah, place. we're praising for the rain because if I wasn't sitting here studying, I would probably be out there dancing in it. We haven't had rain in what? Maybe two months? Well, let's hear you do a spiritual dance. All right, ready? <laughs> Verse 1 says, Again, he showed me many trees, of which some had leaves, and others appeared dry and withered. And he said unto me, Seest thou these trees? I answered, Sir, I see them. Some are dry, and some are full of leaves. Okay, we're still out in the field, and we're still talking about trees. Remember in Similitudes 3, how the angel asked Hermas why he was looking at the vine and the elm. Right. Well, now he's just looking at trees. Some are full of leaves, and some are dry. And the, um, well, no, I think it was similar to two was the elm and the and and the vine, right? Correct. The, so the last one too. was all kinds of trees too, just like correct. This one. Correct. You're right. You're right. So the angel asked him. I'm paying attention now. You know, we're trying to get nothing past me. The angel says to him, "Do you see these trees?" And Herman says, "Yes, I see them, and some are dry, and some are full of leaves." Right. So you have the introduction. So let's start. Let's go on to. Yeah, well, okay. Two. Let's go on. To number two. Verse two. Let me punch this. Make it straighten up. Keys a little bit. All right. Though these trees say, if he doesn't say say he look in your book. My book. My thing says say it's B. <laughs> she's got the hardcover book. Uh, she say it he. She's got the teacher's copy. Okay. These trees, said he, which are green, are the righteous, who shall possess the world to come. For the world to come is the summer to the righteous, but to sinners it is the winter. Okay, so the angel is um, asking him, do we see the trees? Herman says, yes. And then the angel said, the trees, which are green, are the righteous. Now, we remember, remember that we said the righteous were... When we think of righteous, we think of godly, we think of upstanding, we think of moral, ethical. And also, we have to remember that the most important um, way of defining the word righteous is the, those who rejoice in the law. So Rejoice in the law, okay. Those, I see what you're saying. Those who, 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 who make it happen, those who do, do the law. Okay, now that's righteous probably from the biblical definition, whereas the non-biblical definition can mean all this stuff I'm looking at here, virtuous, moral, good, just, blameless, upright, honorable, or honest. 
that's like a secular definition of righteous. Correct. Right. right. The biblical definition of righteous is those that rejoice in the law. Gotcha. Okay. So the angel uh, says to Hermas, the green tree represents those who who are righteous and those which shall possess the world to come. Now we know that when one possess something, one has ownership of. Right. So he's he's telling him that the green trees are going to possess the world to come. Right. Now remember in similar to one how we talked about that there are two different worlds. Okay. The world we live in now, where we are just pilgrims, we're just visitors in it, and um, this is not our home. Right. That was similar to one. And then there's the world to come, the other world. And that is the one that we're reaching, we're striving for, right. the world to come. So what do we know about this world and what do we know about the world to come? Well, now, huh? go ahead. Well, we think we know a lot about this world because it's based in materialism and it's the stuff we see. This, this world that we live in now is all about our houses, our clothes, you know, and different stuff that we're able to touch because of, you know, because we live in these bodies. We have to have, you know, different stuff, you know. But the world to come is on a higher ev evolution spiritually, and it doesn't involve our, these bodies. And so when, that's why he's saying it's, it's similar to one. If you remember, he said, um, don't be worrying about buying a bunch of houses and a bunch of lands and spending all your money on, you know, possessions of this world. Spend your times on the possessions that's to come. And then Matthew said, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John said something to the effect of um, where your where your treasure is you know that's that's where your heart will be also so the world to come I say we know everything about the world we're in but I don't know much about the world I don't think we know about the world to come we just have to go by faith and you know well in similar to this one we talked about the things that we are to be doing in this world and things that we're not to be doing in this world some of the things that we are to be doing is we have to be we're to we are to be giving right we are to be uh living simple lives and not necessarily and not taking on unnecessary things right. and some of the things that we are not supposed to be doing is as you said we're not supp supposed to be having the superfluous just houses we're not supposed to be buying estates and we're not supposed to be hoarding our abundance and when i was going over the scripture i was thinking about you know how a person when a person lives in an apartment building mm -hmm. That is not their apartment. So that's home. a good analogy of this earth. We live in, it's like we're living in an apartment building on this world, but yet we're spending all of our time dressing up and making it pretty. Right. You know, we're just going to leave it behind in the, in the land. That's a good analogy. Yeah, that, that is not our home. It's it, an apartment building we live in here on earth. Right, right, right. Okay. All right. And some of the things that we know about and we will learn about the world to come is that it has one, this is code in similar to one, that it has its own set of laws. Okay, biblical laws. Biblical laws. The things we do in the name of the Father, we will, in this world, we will find in our world to come. Okay. You remember how you always say that I'm going to get it back? Yeah, your, your marriage, everything you do, every, every, every good deed will be rewarded. And there's joy there's no sadness and there's no fear, and we're going to talk about some of this. Okay. okay. You know, back to your back to your apartment building analogy. So instead of spending the money on the granite top, granite countertops and stuff for somebody else's apartment building, you should pro you should take that money and go to the neighbor and help them buy some food or help them, you know, with the use use that money to help the neighbors. You know, maybe even throw them a party. That would be equivalent to storing up treasure in heaven. Yep, storing up treasures in heaven. Yep, right, and it. I like that analogy. We covered that, and we covered that in similar to one. All right, verse three. When therefore the mercy of the Lord shall shine forth, then they who serve God shall be made manifest and plain unto all. For as the summer is the fruit of every tree is shown and made manifest. For as in the summer the fruit of every tree is shown and made manifest, so also the works of the righteous shall be declared and made manifest, and they shall be restored 
in that world merry and joyful okay some of my notes I have down here I says when the mercy now when we talk about mercy we're talking about um, when the offender when the person is given less severity um, of what they should have deserved so the, the, the punishment is less severe than the crime right right so when the mercy of the father um, shall shine forth then those who serve Yah shall be manifest shall be made plain and clear to all is, do you understand what is opposed that? to now where now. we all mixed up with, with the brown trees now where we all mixed up and you can't tell a pecan tree from an oak tree right right it goes on to say for in the summer the fruit of every tree is shown and made manifest so also the work of the righteous shall be declared for, Go ahead. for as in the summer the fruit of every tree is shown and is evident and I was thinking like in the summer time it's very easy to tell a plum tree when we think about summer what do we think of when you think about summer what do you think hot. of Cliff I'm hot I think about heat uh... Ooh, it is lightning here yeah <laughs> We haven't had rain in a long time. No. I believe it's drying up before it hit the ground. It's so dry. Yeah, I believe the, the rain is evaporating before it hit the ground. It's, it's, it's mighty noisy. It's some noisy rain. Yeah. <laughs> but what, what were you saying? When you think of summer, when I think of summer, I think of um, fruit trees all growing. You know, er everything has fruit on it. I think of the farmers having lots of crops in the field, lots of vegetables, and we we being farmers, we plant vegetables in the summer. I also think of beaches. I think okay. of travel. I think of vacation. I think of feasts. I think of walking barefoot in the grass. So the summer, when I think of summer, I think of in 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 an analogy of a tree. I think of the summer having the sap. Okay, that stuff that helps the tree grow. Up. Right, right. And the winter as having the dry the dry trees. Yeah. Okay. Having the dry tree. When I think of winter, I think of lack of life, I think of cold, I think of us having to get in wood all the time. I think of um and the trees they become dormant. Okay, right. In the winter time. They have no no sap or as Chris informed me. The sap is dry. Yeah. It doesn't leave, doesn't leave the trees. It's just in a state like of your dormancy. Like the ground is in the ground. Sap is right. in the ground. Right, right, right. The sap is just dry. So that goes back to what we're saying. The world we live in is winter to the righteous, those who keep the law. But the world to come is summer for those who are unrighteous. It's not a place. It's not a place of of of. Not a good place to be. Yeah, if they're not keeping the law. Yeah. If they're if they do not keep the law, back. To, I see you, there's some kind of hesitation. With, not good. Is there is there like I know there's no contradiction, but. Well. The only hesitation I have is that we have to understand that when you say they don't keep the law, you're talking about a lot, a lot of people. You're talking about everybody. There's only 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 four percent of professing Christians. That's the ones who jump up and down and say, yep, I'm a Christian. Only four percent of professing Christians are jumping up and down and say, yep, I actually read the Bible. All right. So if they haven't read the Bible, how do they know the law? So now start with 100 people. Uh, no, we're going to start with we're going we're going to start with. Uh, a thousand people because there's only a few of them that are professing Christians out of a thousand people I'm gonna guess and say that only a hundred of what we're gonna say half of them, half of them are professing Christians so you're down to 500 people and then you say well only only four percent of them are actually reading the Bible that's 20 people out of a thousand wow. now at 20 people out of a thousand how many of them actually get it how many of them actually got a grasp on it I, you know, I would say maybe one maybe one so one in a thousand so you, you you're talking from a standpoint that you know you're saying if you don't keep the law but you're talking about 990 
999 people out of a thousand, you know, I root for the underdogs. I'm with them. I'm gonna stand over there with them. I'm gonna get the law. You know? <laughs> mm, okay. All but right. it is it is a distinction. I think what the distinction here is try, that we're trying to understand is that the Lord has a plan, but His plan is not really identifiable in this age that we live in. But right. the, but when as we go move further down this road and get to this summertime, of course, there'll be a transition where we transition from winter to to summer. There's got to be a spring in there somewhere. And it kind of feels like spring now as you, as you see stuff budding, uh, you see trees, you know, start to show some leaves or whatever um, in, in the form of the law, of course. And so, um, I don't know, what do you think? What do you think? Well, uh, like you said, um, there's only going to be a, a small percentage of those who actually keep the law. Well, if they listen to your class, then they will keep the law. Remember, that's the point of part of as part of your teaching, teaching Hermes, one of the things that Hermes was taught, and, you know, I think it was the first class, is that you have to keep the law. That's necessary. Oh, and, and they will learn that they need to keep the law. Well, but they're learning to need to keep the law. That, that's a, that process in itself involves the whole tribulation. Right, right. That, because if you, if you remember his plan is that the ma majority of the doubtful uh, people in the world are going to stay doubtful until the very last second, the very last minute. And they're only going to be converted at that point. But they will be converted. A lot of people will be converted that have no idea that there even is such a thing as a law or that we're supposed to be keeping it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a little bit confusing. Or, or I may be confusing it more than it is, but that's what I do. <laughs> you want to go into four? Um, or have we have we sufficiently covered well, three? Well, let's look at that last part. It's talking about merry and joyful. I don't think we touched on those words. So as the works of the righteous shall be declared and made manifest, and they shall be restored in the world, merry and joyful. Um. Okay. So that's talking about the world to come. Right. And so they're going to be restored. The the righteous the righteous ministers will be restored, merry and joyful. So when you, when you talk about restores, you're talking about bringing back to their former life. Right. So they're going to be bought back. Um, this is the righteous people we're talking about. They're going to be restored back to their former life in the world to come. And remember, we said in the world to come, there is no more sadness, there is no more fear, and they will be. They will be merry and joyful. And that's what the um, the beginning was talking about, how the righteous is going to be happy. Verse 4 says, for the other kind of men, namely the wicked. Excuse me. For the other kind of men, namely the wicked, like the trees which thou raweth dry. What does that say? Solid. Solid dry. Uh, like the trees with thou sawest dry, shall as such be found dry and without fruit in the other world. And like dry wood shall be burnt, and it shall be made manifest that they have done evil all the time of their life. Okay, I have fun with Will and Clifford on this here scripture. I'm going to read my notes. It says, For the other men, for the other kind of men, namely the wicked, like the trees which you saw that were dry, the riches, the wicked, shall be found like dry trees and without fruit in the world to come. And like dry wood, they shall be burnt. Well, how well how I had fun with Will and Clifford is I was telling them how dry trees don't stand a chance around here. When our boys go and get wood, they go out and get a dry tree. So if a tree is not producing fruit, it's going down. It's they going. It's going it to there. the fire, and it's gonna be burnt. And that's what he's saying. If you are a dry tree, and you are not producing fruit, you there. What else is there to do with it? What else do you do with a dry tree? Nah, ain't, well, you can do some other stuff, but he ain't got no plans on doing nothing other than what you see right here. He burning it. That's he's gonna burn he's gonna it. it around here. That's what we do. Dry trees, we don't, we don't, we don't, you know, we, we, we love dry trees because they don't have sap in them. See, but I don't know, let's, let's, let's understand what we're talking about. Again, we're talking about the ministers here. Mm -hmm. The righteous minister versus the wicked minister. Right. The minister 
that is teaching the law, teaching the Torah, teaching the Sermon on the Mount, teaching what thus says the Lord versus the minister that's just out there, you know, telling people whatever they want to hear so that they keep, you know, paying him and keeping him in, in his business that he got going on there. Well, when the when in in the, in the world to come, the Lord's plan is is to let these people continue to do this. Or you think of the the most wicked minister there is in the world. Mm -hmm. His plan is not to step in and do anything to him or his ministry. He's gonna let his he's gonna let him continue, and his flock are gonna continue up until the very last minute when they're all both him and his flock are going to get destroyed in the tribulation. All you know, some of these they will be some of these seven billion people. That are going to get annihilated in this 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 fire that's coming up where he's going to burn all of this dry wood. That is his plan. Right, right, to right. Burn so spiritually burn them, mm -hmm. even physically burn them. Yep, yep. And this it, is a little hard for Hermes. Y'all come over. Y'all come over to uh, <laughs> come over to the Hermes Academy Black. We we go hard over there. <laughs> don't hold no punches. We are gonna pull some punches over here, babe. Good night. Okay. <laughs> So he's saying that that it's going to become clear. It's going to be evident, become evident who who's who, who's the dry wood and who's the wet wood. So I guess the message here for the righteous ministers to hold on. Right. Yep. I think that's the message of this entire similitude. So hold on. Um, we know. I know that it's winter here for you, but you know you're gonna have to stay here and you're gonna have to go through it because summer is coming. Summer is coming. Summer is coming. And, yeah. So don't be so concerned about the big three-story houses. Don't be yeah. so concerned about the persecution. You know, the Messiah. And I, I, I wrote down, Cliff, how the scripture, there's no contrary, no, 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 no contradiction with the scripture mm -hmm. this lines up exactly what the messiah was saying that in on the sermon on the mount how he was telling us don't be concerned don't be anxious you know um a lot of times we take that and we use it in our everyday prayers but i believe that he was talking about the things of the world to come don't you know look forward to the this is not our home. Yeah. Why are we so involved in it? And I, I got that. That message hit home to me about how I, are you so involved? You know, I know you have to do the day-to-day -day living. Yeah. Right. I know you have to eat. I know you have to, you know, take care of your children. But don't be so, so involved in these big things. You know, you don't need, I don't need 10 coach bags. You know what I'm saying? I don't need uh, a Louis Vuitton bag, every different color, or the red bottom shoes and all this other stuff. Extra stuff. Yeah, all this extra stuff. Yeah. Because my treasure is in the world to come. That's right. And what one of the things you got to understand, like we, we plug the, Herm, the Hermes Academy Black over there, you know, um, it's not that rough over there, guys. Come check it out. But... But one thing it does teach is that we have to be able to combine materialism and spiritualism. He uses the he uses the phrase give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God. So we might not have fifty handbags, but we do have one. Mm -hmm. We so you said, well, why do we, we have to have? He, he what he what he what he tell us? What he t trying to tell us is that. You're going to have to have some material stuff to live here. You're going to have to have a house. You're going to have to have clothes on your back, especially in the wintertime, you know. And what he's saying is, okay, don't, the message that he's, that he's telling is don't, don't go get away from all material stuff. At least keep one car so you ain't got to beg and, you know, or walk. You know, or, or you know, starve because you can't get to get some food or something. So the car is necessary. But you know, if you have multiple cars, well, you know, you consider selling some of those cars and giving them to the poor. Or just straight up give, give them car to the poor person. Right, and and, them ride around and for a in the third testament, he tells us that um that we are gonna have to have these things. Some yeah. of these material things. Well, you, yeah, I mean, you got to have a stove where you're going to get heat. I mean, 
You gotta understand. I mean, it's, 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 but there has to be balance. You have to give Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and you have to give the Lord what belongs to the Lord. You, you have to have a balance between it. Yep, yep. And he so, tells I mean, us you're not gonna really be. The Lord doesn't really expect you to, you know, be walking, you know, uh, handling your business with all of your, you know, wallet and personal belongings in a Walmart grocery bag. He right. doesn't really expect that. You know what I'm saying? You're walking down the street and all of a sudden all, all everything you own just fell out on the ground and now you're sitting there looking real stupid, picking it up off the ground. They, they, you know, because you, you know, trying to avoid the material. No, there has to be balance. Yeah, yeah. It makes me think of, um, we, the Lord is not, knowing that we have, we're having children, he tells us to be fruitful and multiply. He knows that we are not just going to be walking up and down the street with our children. We have to have a place, we have to have a place to abode. Right, yeah, we have yeah. to have a residence. We have to, you know, be able to provide for our children and so on and so forth. So, I mean, he's, you know, it, don't be ridiculous. You know, the Lord, yeah, yeah, you have, yeah you have to have balance. Okay, you want to go on to number five? And they shall be burnt because they have sinned and have not repented of their sins. And also the other nations shall be burnt because they have not acknowledged God, their creator. What does yours say? That seems odd to me. It says, it says that because they have not acknowledged God, their creator. The other nations? It is the other Asian? nations. Oh. Nope, it says the other nations. Somewhere else in the book it says, it's, it's always where it defines the difference between a sinner and a heathen. And it said the heathen hasn't acknowledged their creator. So, mixing it up. Okay. It says, and they shall be burnt because they have transgressed Yah's law and have not repented. Yeah, now, this, this is talking about everybody, though. This is not just the wicked. Minister. Right, right. This, this is, is this is talking about everybody. But I believe, what do you think about this? And and when we go to the next, 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 not next verse, we go to the next sentence. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to ask you about it. I say... That this is talking about the Israelites. Because it says, and they, think, think in mind, or is he talking about the Israelites? You, you, you tell me yes or no. And they shall be burnt because they have transgressed Yah's law and have not repented. And also the other nations, because they shall be burnt because they have not confessed Yah their creator. So, so, why? Uh, <laughs> What are you You're doing? down it down to bloodline Israel, yeah, yeah. You got it, yeah. You you. I mean, because when you first hit Israel, you, everybody's in there, grafted in Israel, most right, Israel, right. Courtler yard Israel, everybody, Tower Israel, everybody's in there. But sounds like this is pointing to the bloodline Israel, the 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 um, ones that were standing at the bottom of Mount Sinai. And the reason why I say that is because that was the only one that received the contract. Right, the right. Contract is on their life. Yeah, you know? I know you always say you say that's supported by the Third Testament, and about how you say Israel was given the law and the others were giving love. Yeah, yeah. So no, no one was given the law except for those two million people standing at Mount Sinai. There was, you know, the the world was. There was a lot of people living. You know, there there were um, Japanese and Asian and Caucasian and you know all kinds of people on the planet, but there was only a certain group that got. The, the law and you look at that word sin there and what you say the definition of sin is the, the sin is the definition of sin is just transgression of the law so you can't be in transgression of the law unless you had received the law right so so I right. think you're right that's talking about bloodline Israel and then the next part I believe you're right it is. and did, well then I asked myself I say so I said well the Caucasian the Asians the, this other groups they they confess they love the love y'all they love the Messiah but then I was like well if the Messiah you tell me again I want you to tell me if if I'm wrong if the Messiah showed up here a brown skinned dude with nappy hair like me are they going to really confess him as the messiah he didn't go on it i don't know man that sounds like a trick question <laughs> <laughs> are they really going to confess him as a messiah is that what he's talking about or is that is that not because it says they will be burnt because they no. have not not confessed him yeah. as creator no i think he went off on i think, he, I think that's he that's off not that. it that's no not he's it. saying the other nations as in everybody else nobody knows who god is 
Right. Nobody, I mean, we think we do, but you go down to the the, the hardcore church right now with the 4,000 members in there hollering, Jesus, 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 and see, ain't you got Christmas and Easter and all kinds of business going on in that church. Nobody knows who he is. Mm-hmm. You no, know? and that's what he's saying, and that was the, that was the purpose for him having the bloodline Israelites to be shipped over here to America and scattered amongst all of the nations so that when the tribulation goes down and we get the you know this this fire gets ignited that's gonna do all of this burning that it talks about you do have a remnant of some people who does know who he is and does know how to acknowledge him because the rest of the world don't. We're gonna go to number six. Do then therefore bring forth good fruit that in the summer thy fruit may be known. And keep thyself from much business, and thou shalt not offend. For they who are involved in much business sin much, because they are taken up with their affairs and serve not God. Well, it seems like this here is two different. He's talking about two different things, but he's actually not. In 6, at the beginning of 6, he says, he's giving Hermas like the final question. He's, he's about to talk talk about something else. He says, will you, Hermas, bring forth good fruit that in the world to come, your fruit may be known? It's like he's doing a summary of that. And then it's like, then you see that semicolon. Mm-hmm. And then he starts talking about business. Mm-hmm. He says, and keep thyself from much business. Now, we talked about Hermes and his business and vision, too. Mm -hmm. Remember when he talked about uh, how Hermes had neglected his sons um, because he was so involved in his business. And but he's saying, what does he say? He says, and keep thyself from much business and thou shall not and you shall not offend. Where you put the word y'all in it and you shall not offend y'all for they who are involved in much business. Sin much because they are taken up with the affairs and serve God, serve not God. So he's 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 leaving. Can you do you see what I'm saying? He's making like a transition. He's leaving, talking about the trees. Well, he's kind and of he's, mixing up. He's he's putting he's, he's he's putting two different things together that don't seem to go together. Right. Business and fruit. Right, right, right. So he's telling Hermes to. Not be involved in much business because those who are involved in much business cannot adequately serve the Most High. Well, you can't serve God and mammon is what it's talking about there. If you are involved with much business, meaning like multiple businesses where, you know, you really have no time, you know, for yourself, you really don't have any time for the Lord too. And that's what he's saying here. They sin much because they serve not the Lord, which means... You know, they ain't got time to pick up no scripture and be reading there and trying to follow what they're supposed to be doing and, you know, doing all of this spending. It takes a lot of time to, 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 so, I mean, it, it's, it, you, you can spend as much time as you want serving the Lord. If you want to serve, if you want to spend 24 hours a day serving the Lord, you very well could. So when we talk, when he's talking about business here, we're, we're talking about jobs, we're talking about occupations, because that's yeah. what I believe that he's talking about. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. But what he's saying is, is that your business is going to interfere with your fruit. If you go to- yeah, yeah, it's going to, because you can't, you can't do it. You can't, you're going to get, if you have three or four jobs and you say, well, how do I know that he's talking about business? Well, you got to go back and read to vis- read Visions 1. And it's going to plainly support what we're saying. He's talking about occupations. He's talking about jobs. He's talking about business. If you have three or four jobs, you don't have time to serve. And even though you want to, you're tired. If I'm working out in the garden, I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm out there uh, feeding the livestock. I'm doing, I don't, I, when I get home, you know, and this is not going outside of our homestead. This is right here. When I when it's time to come in, I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm irritable, and you know I don't yeah. want. I, I'm definitely not going to sit down and study uh, no scripture. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm Just being that. real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know I'm not going to sit down and study no scripture. You know a lot of, a lot of times you hear people say when they sit down to study scriptures they fall asleep. Yeah. And well, I mean you're tired. You you're 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 concerned with the different affairs, the different businesses that you got going on. Yeah. And you don't have time for serving 
serving the Father. And he says that when you have, when you are involved in much of this business, you're sinning much. You're transgressing the law. Um, you just don't have time to serve him. Yeah, you don't, you don't have time to do what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. And then 7, I'm going to read 7. It says, so how can a man who does not serve Yah serve? What do we mean by serve? Well, let me say, if you say to yourself, so am I supposed to just quit my job? And and wait for the Lord. Number seven, it says, And how can a man who does not serve God ask anything of God and receive it? But they who serve him ask and receive what they re desire. So you, you say, so am I supposed to just quit my job and sit back and ask, you know, the Father for stuff and receive it? No, he said you got to serve him. Yeah. That serve is a very important word. So I said, well, let's look up the word serve. See what this word serve means. And serve means, I have my uh, 1956 dictionary. She can pull out the 56. Di dictionary. It says, serve means to work as the servant. Slave. A lot of times we see that word slave. You always say, when you see that word slave, it's a, when you see the word servant, it's a modernized term for the word slave. To work as a slave, hireling, or employee of. To obey. To work for, to live and act as a servant or an employee. Uh, to obey and worship religiously as to, to serve God. To be in submission. So there's a lot to the word serve. Right. It's not just sitting back and receiving, asking and receiving. He's not saying that. He says that you have to serve him. You was about to say something, Clay? Well, I was just going to reference the dictionary. When you when you pull out your 56, I'll think about using this um, the oh, Columbia yeah. Viking Death Encyclopedia, too. It, it has a lot of the right. old meanings of words. So, you know, you like to look up words. You might want to check that one out every once in a while. Yep, 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 I will, I will. Right, well, all right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, and, and so but remember the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, you know? So if you seek in business all your life and spend all your time seeking money, how can you now, you know, you know, expect for the Lord to now answer your prayers? So the person who says, should I just quit my job and, and you know, wait for the Lord to give me? Yeah, you should. You know, that's exactly what, you know, that's exactly what you should do. You know, you should put full faith and trust in him to take care of your every need. That's what he means by seeking first the kingdom of heaven. But in this material world that we live in with all of these, you know, and in this dry tree environment that we live in, it's really hard for people to understand that. And so, you know, first thing you do is start looking around and say, oh, I don't see nobody else doing this. Everybody else I know is is getting a check from somewhere mm -hmm. whether it's from the job or whether it's from you know government somewhere everybody's getting a check you know what i'm saying so ain't nobody you know and then you, on the other hand you don't see a whole lot of blessings from the father mainly because we don't know what they are you know we really expect the lord to bless us with our you know materialistic wishes you know he right. said to you know, asking you will receive. Well, we limited to our asking to material stuff. We didn't. We didn't ask for you know spiritual stuff, which is really what he was telling us to do. Right, right, right. But well, we have to remember to store in that word. So let me ask you this. So would you say that someone should um, quit their job and sit back? Ask the Lord for something. Don't receive it. You don't, you don't, you know, you don't serve him. You don't, you don't spend time with him. You don't, you know, practice, read what he's saying and practice them. You don't uh, try to follow his laws and stuff. So is it fair for someone to, to quit, quit the job, sit back, ask, and when they don't receive stuff to start saying, I know this isn't true? Let me tell you what happened, what I did. Back in the 90s. There was this big thing going around the church, um, stepping out on faith. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I've got wind of this at, at a at a church there in Maryland or somewhere, and it touched my heart to step out on faith, and I actually did. I actually quit 
everything. I have, my whole job was in school. I had job. I had a job. I was in, and going to school at the same time. And I was doing a whole, you know, some other different stuff. And I walked away from it all. But I was doing just that. I stepped out on faith. I didn't have any knowledge at all of what I was doing. And the, the, the very same day that I found myself having stepped out on faith, I found myself in the park not knowing what steps to take. And I'm going to tell you guys, the steps to take, although I ate that night, I didn't, you know, uh, he did give me, I did have food, I did have clothes, clothing, and, you know, can't say I had shelter that night. But um, he did step in. I was not hungry. He did not leave me out there. But at the same time, because I didn't have any knowledge of what I was actually doing, I fell, I, I, I kind of faltered in myself. You remember the Bible says to read, read to show yourself approved, but I hadn't really read much, so I didn't know what I was doing. Right. So you can just quit your job. Yeah, you should just quit your job. But, you know, is that is that what I'm technically or, fit, or really advising you to do? No. You, what you want to do is you want to seek ye first the kingdom of, of God, not seek your unemployment check first. He says yeah. seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You can't, you know, quit and say I'm going to uh, ask and receive something from the Lord and you... Uh, you sitting at home watching television all day and waiting for the check to come in the mail. No. But at the same time, he is going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. I promise you. I promise you right now, if somebody were to say, you know what? Forget it. I'm, I'm tired of this place and I'm going to quit and I'm going home and I don't care what happened. You know, the Lord going to take care of me. The Lord going to take care of you. Hmm. Okay. Now, if you're rebellious and doubtful and ignorant, like I was saying earlier, you're gonna be out in the park. You know, yeah. Well, that's crazy. what. I, well, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I'm ta not talking about. Yeah, the Lord is gonna. You know, you think it within yourself. The Lord is gonna provide for me. No, you're. You're not. You don't have no. No. No inkling or no thoughts of the Lord. You just saying. Just quit. Yeah. You know, just quit. Yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, a, like your child, like, I ain't gonna do fine. You ain't gotta, you gotta feed me no more, mama. I ain't gotta, well, I ain't gonna wash the dishes no more. I'm gonna let the Lord take care of me and they go sit out in the woods. <laughs> yeah, you better learn to eat berries real quick. Right, uh -huh. right. <clears throat> okay, let's wrap it up. No, we got one more. Number eight. Two more. Two more. But if a man has only one thing to follow, he may serve God because his mind is not taken off from God, but he serves him with a pure mind. That's if you only, and he's still talking about the affairs. If you only have one thing, and you can just concentrate on one, you don't do. If you have, if if you must have a job, and it's your desire to have a job, and and you have they a job, giving up their jobs, it's too late job, for all that anyway. Then you can concentrate on on the things of the Lord. Yeah, but. Yeah, you can. He's saying that if you, in, if you, you know, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, meaning you spend, you know, the appropriate amount of time down there at the office, you know, your eight hours, you ain't, you know, like, you know, like I was sometimes down at, you know, in my old career where you, you may be spending 80 hours a week down there, you know, working. If you're not working yourself crazy, spending a regular time, you know, at work, then you can go home and you can spend time with the Lord. He doesn't require a lot of time. But, you know, an hour or two when when you got, you know, three, four jobs, you ain't gonna have an hour. You know, when right. I was working, yeah. Right. You mean if you put you put the child on the bus at seven o'clock and then from uh seven thirty to uh ten o'clock you got one job and then from uh twelve o'clock to five o'clock you got another job and then from five o'clock to ten you have another job and from ten to two you know you're doing something else and we as a society we praise that person we say you know he worked this, this is a hard worker but you don't have time for the father it's just building up it's the, I, I think the the message is is that we really need to stop trying to build up our treasure here so much and and it goes for everybody try to spend more time trying to build up spiritual tre treasures and that goes for the you know for the person who you know sits behind a computer making youtube ministry videos all day too we all need to we all, all need to progress right you know we all need to try to get higher in this thing spiritualism and last number nine if therefore thou shalt do this, thou mayest have fruit in the world to come, and as many as shall do in like manner shall bring forth fruit. 
So if you do these things, you will have fruit in the world to come. And what are the things that we have to do, Cliff? Um, you you ask it from 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 a third testament point of view. Sure, third testament what, point what of view. We, okay, what, to do what? What are your goals? To do what? Because that everybody has different goals. You know, some people some people are never going to give up their materialism, and they're just fine. They're going to keep the Louis Vuitton purse and the big thing, the big glasses till till the new come down, and they're going to be all right too. You know, so the, the, the question is what is the, the question one must have the one the question that one has to understand is what do they really want out of life? What do you want? You're saying do they want to have treasures in the world to come or are do they you want to be raptured or do you want to be saved? Right. And so if you don't know what your end goal is, you don't know, you know what you want. So let's assume that you Understand the difference between being raptured and saved. Mm -hmm. Where, um, um, no, let me see. Do you want to tell them what's the difference? A quick, quick, quick definition of what's being when raptured I, when, okay, and saved. Okay, rapture. The, 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 let's let's. It's it's kind of it's kind of tough because the word rapture mm -hmm. means caught away in a cloud, like we're going somewhere, like we're leaving the planet, like we're all gonna one day be moved off the planet. Well, what that's when you when you try to make that fit in the Bible terms, when you go opposite from what the average person does, where they take something out of the scripture and shine it in the light of the world and try to make it make sense as far as the world. Well, we're going to take something of the world and put it in light of the scripture and make it make sense. If you help me get back to where I was at, what we're talking about. We're talking about the rapture and the um. Right. So the word rapture, um, when the way the world understands rapture is that we're leaving. All of the Chris, all of the church, everybody's going somewhere. But what's actually going to happen is during the the tribulation, about seven billion people are going to die. It's, it's, about seven billion people are going to die in the form of pestilence, war, famines. There's different things that's going on. So what we think of the traditional way we think of the rapture is it's everybody's going to get called away and going somewhere else. Um, that's not happening. It's going to, it's going to, it, it's just, okay, but that's one thing. They're going somewhere else. They're going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Whereas saved, now you're talking about the people that are going to be back here left behind and are going to get the planet, you know, so, so what you got to understand, are you planning on going somewhere or are you planning on staying? Are you planning on being raptured or are you planning on being saved? Are you planning on getting caught up in a cloud or are you planning on being, you know, inheriting the earth? There's, there's a really significant difference there. Well... And I know, and this might be another class, Cliff, about rapture. Me knowing that he says that being left behind is a good thing. We are taught that. Don't say that. Does not the scripture support that? I don't say that. The Bible scripture don't say nothing about left behind. That's man's made up stuff. The being those who are caught up. Okay. It does. It does. Well, it doesn't call them left behind. It, the Bible doesn't talk like that at all. Yeah, yeah. That's my words. My words no, left behind. Man, man, man left yeah. Be because he's 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 developed the word rapture. He's, it's a man made up word too. If you look, it's nowhere in the scripture. But it it means getting caught up and pulled away. So if somebody's if the church, the so called good guys are caught up and pulled away, then you got to have somebody who is quote left behind. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, some, yeah. It's just some man made up words. The scripture doesn't talk about the left behind because it's talking about the inheritance of the earth. You got to understand this: the planet, everything's going to be all right. We're just going to go through a troubled time, just no different than what the, what Egypt went through back there with Moses and all. It's going to be, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, pain and crying and anguish and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, the birds going to start chirping again. The water going to clear up. The sky's going to clear up and everything going to go back to being all right. It's going to be restored. It's going back to be restored, and you still going to have people here. They're still going to be having babies. They're going to be marrying again. They're going to, you know, start party. They're going to build the internet back up. They're going to get these tractors running again, start farming. And, you know what I'm saying? The car's going to be running again. They may be running off diesel fuel yeah, because, you know, it might be hard to get some gasoline out of Texas or whatever. But life is going to continue. It's not going to end like that whole, like the whole rapture left behind, world ending kind of language. None of that's going to happen. Okay, what? so when we speak of the world to come, what are we speaking of? 
what you're speaking of is post tribulation. See, the world we're in right now, we're right. we're we're living right now in the Piscean age. We're at the very end of the Piscean age, moving into the Aquarian age. Well, that has a lot that has a lot to do with mankind because we're going from we're changing airs. We're changing everything's going. To, I mean, it's a really big deal. This Piscean age is the age of deception, where we we like the lies, where we like soap operas, where we like you know summer. Uh, it's the paying, summer. No, it's the, it's winter, the winter. It's the yeah. winter. I keep and getting mixed like, up. It's know, the winter time. Yeah, we like we like paying money for food. We like you know what I'm saying, uh, being taxed for this, and we like all this nonsense that's going on. Well, remember the the the, the plan is that the the rock is going to come out of heaven and it's going to destroy the earth's economic systems and then we're going to be forced to go back to the way stuff is really supposed to be with a reliance on the father instead of reliance on the beast systems right right <clears throat> so but that that helped me a lot when you said that the world to come is talking about post tribulation so that's the world and and that's the world to come is because when we get you know after um this tribulation um humbles us right. after the tribulation humbles us and takes down all this haughtiness and all this foolishness that's going on you know what i'm saying people start to notice that there's really no power in all of this nonsense that you guys are doing you know there's no there's no power in kissing people's rings there's no power in kissing on a crucifix that doesn't do you any good there's no power in saying a, a, a 30 minute prayer and you know there's there's and so they're going to want something that actually helps them. Well, these ministers who've been, you know, downtrodden and been to tell all this time, now their going, fruit is going to be to, to right, bloom. Recognized. It's going to be proof. It's going to be recognized. Right. 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 That makes sense. That 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 <clears throat> that clears up a lot of what I was wondering about the world to come. Is he talking about some far off place where we go up and we'll be raptured? No, he's talking about post tribulation yeah, because the the world okay the the, the to do and, I, and i'm gonna let you wrap this i'm gonna shut up but though uh, i just learned this today that's why i'm talking about it but the world as we understand it is not going to end what's going to end is the is the way we live here everything about the way we live is going to be altered by this tribulation it's going to flip and correct everything that we're not going to do anything the same anymore you know, it's just not going to be there. You know, we do all kinds of stuff that, you know, Easter egg hunts and Super Bowls and, you know, all kinds of stuff that, you know, we don't know what, but a lot of this stuff ain't coming back. Right. You know? Right. Right. So that's why he says that, and I'll wrap it up with this here. That's why he says that we, um, in the, the summer here is, and the right, the unrighteous are enjoying the summer. They're enjoying this fruit. Winter. The, <laughs> the unrighteous. Winter yeah, we it's the winter now here. But for the for the unrighteous, for the unrighteous, this world is the win is the summer. Mm. For the unrighteous, this world is the summer. Is that's what he says. For the unrighteous. Okay. For those who do not keep the law, he says this world is the summer. For the righteous, this world is the winter. Okay. Does that does that make sense? Does that make that make sense to you? Yeah, I'm 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 following. So when the world to come, the world to come will be the summer. Right. For those who are righteous. But and it will be a will, winter for those who are unrighteous. Right. But they're still going to be dry and they're still going to be, you know, worthless and you're ready to be part of the fire. And the world to come, you will see, because it is the summer. You will see those fruit from those who have suffered back in the winter time. Right. Those who have who have not been able to 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 be distinguished from the from the green tree and the dry tree yeah. growing together. You will you'll be able to see their fruit, and and that's a good thing. good thing. So praise the Lord for it. I want to leave, leave the people with a few scripture: Matthew 6 and 19, 6 and 20, when the Messiah talks about lay not your treasure here upon earth but lay it up in the heaven all right let's say thank you all for um for listening and we ask that you will continue to listen give us a thumbs up if you like uh give us a comment you know don't be so hard on me
Um, but give us a comment. Daniel, husband, shut up! <laughs> give us a comment on it. And, um, and the most important is that it's healthy. And, and we praise, praise the Father for that. Want to talk about next time? So, to next class, we're going to be Semitus 5 of the true fast and the rewards of it. Also, of the cleanliness of the body. So fasting. Fasting. I think this was going to be a hard one. What do you think? Fasting? Yeah. This is another clearing up misconceptions on what we think fasting is. That's, I mean, that's why you're here. That's why you got Harvest Academy. you teaching, trying to straighten some of this stuff out. Okay, so y'all, we'll see you guys in Similar Two's 5. Similar Two's 5. Shalom. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.